confusion about training styles and, and their purposes. Okay, so I found this guy. I won't drop his name because I'm not. I don't. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing him at all. Uh, but his training style is 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 mainly body weights, mainly gymnastics, calisthenics. He likes to do strict pull-ups, strict muscle-ups. Strict handstand push-ups. Everything's strict. Everything really slow. Okay? Uh, and he gave me the idea for this video because he was complaining about, specifically about CrossFit and how they like to do things fast. Okay? So, I want to I wanna lay down some vocabulary that's usually where the misunderstanding is there's there's lots of different training speeds training modalities and it all revolves around a simple principle okay a very simple principle and that's the said principle specific adaptation to imposed demands what we've discovered and it, and it has a lot of science to back it up it's, it's, it's probably the that and the overload principle is probably the two most important things to know about training to know about strength and conditioning what whether you're competing in a sport or you're just doing it for fitness is whatever you want to get good at you have to do that thing specifically okay if you don't do that thing there is some overlap but you won't be really great at that one thing okay so his example was if you only do kipping pull-ups you may be able to do 30 kipping pull-ups in a row but you won't be able to do any strict now I've never seen that myself almost I, I can't recall a scenario where somebody didn't have to learn strict pull-ups first before they could do some kipping pull-ups it's, a, it's an odd progression. You'd have to show me one of those. However, that just goes back to the, the said principle. Specific adaptation to imposed demands. Maybe that person just doesn't give a shit about strict pull-ups. Doesn't have to. Okay? Maybe they just want to get really good at kipping pull-ups. You know? That's their preference. It doesn't mean they're doing things improperly. Because who's the proper police? He dropped that bomb about 50 times, and, and I've learned to uh, really hate that word, because that's the proper just means, this is my opinion, okay? Because uh, if you want to try to figure out what's a proper way to do things, I don't think anybody really knows. And the only people that are close to it are probably like gymnasts who have been judged by the highest level judges in Olympics on their form okay now now you're getting to the bottom of what proper is and uh, this guy definitely could not pull off a 10 at the Olympics when it comes to form so proper is in the eye of the beholder and proper is also in respect to the said principle it's proper if it's helping you reach your goal Okay, so let's go over di different types of training speed. Okay, because that's the difference between a kipping pull-up and a strict pull-up is speed. All right. You got, you got strict tempo movements, which is mainly for strength and hypertrophy. All right, those, those are your slower movements. Okay, those are, those are uh, your tip, typical... Uh, Heavy movements, power lifting movements, body weight movements, bodybuilding movements. Okay, the the strict tempo for those who, who only train in that category are not in, they're not in a speed sport. Okay, then you have plyometrics. Those are explosive. Those are a one way trip. 
like throwing a baseball, shooting a basketball, jumping onto a box. You're not worried about the return trip, you're just exploding up or forward and you're done. Okay? That is, uh, that's also a kipping pull up. You're exploding your body upward, you're throwing your chin at the bar, and you're done. All right? That, people freak out about that one. I don't know why, but it's in the same category as a box jump. You're exploding your body upward onto the box, and you're done. One uses your legs, one uses your arms. Okay? Both are speed training. Okay? Both are plyometrics. And then, and then you have other, other uh, categories that are fast, like sprints, okay? People who run track, football, they have to do things very fast. If they don't do things very fast with speed, then they won't be fast. It's the said principle. Okay, so eventually you have to throw speed training in there if that's your goal, if that's your sport. If you're football, your track, um, tennis, any any type of speed sport. Okay. And then you have uh, a category that's kind of all on its own is uh, static holds. Okay, like L sits, planches, wall sits, um, planks. Okay. Those 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 definitely develop a very specific type of strength. You're talking about no speed. All right. So when you're watching somebody do a movement that you're not used to seeing it done quickly, it doesn't mean they're doing it wrong. They're just doing it for speed training. Okay. So, uh, and that's then that's where all the the hype with the kipping pull-up comes from. All right, and then the the other here's three other categories you got to think deeply about when you're training, when you're when you're practicing, or when you're competing. Those are the three categories. It's like when you hit the gym, are you just practicing? Because practicing is no speed. It's all accuracy. All right, so you're learning how to climb rope, and you don't know how to do the the foothold. You don't know how to do the J hook. So you sit there on a box, you set the J hook, then you stand up and you do one pull, and then you sit back down, and you set the J hook and you stand up and you do one pull, and you repeat. Okay. And as soon as you get tired, you stop because you're trying to reinforce the mechanics. You're training your nervous system, your central nervous system. Practice is, is more about nervous system training than it is muscular training. Okay, it could, uh, double unders is a good one. If you don't know how to do double unders, well, you got to practice first. Don't throw them into a Metcon and try to practice and train at the same time. That doesn't work. That's not a thing. Okay, so after practice, that's that's a slow speed. You're doing things slowly and perfectly, properly, okay? And then you're training. Training is when you're pushing your limits. You're conditioning yourself. You're trying to strengthen your heart. You're trying to strengthen your lungs. And you're also testing to see how long how long you can maintain form. Okay, so you're going to do, uh, you're going to take double unders, you're going to do 50 really good double unders, and then the last 10 get really ugly, but you do them anyways, you're not worried about them being proper, because you're training, you're trying to push up the number of double unders you can do properly so then eventually you'll be able to do 60 with perfect form and then 10 really bad and it just climbs from there all right that's training you're always riding the line between uh 
what is it? I guess I don't have a better word for that. Perfect form and and starting to get sloppy. You always want to push it to that limit. And then because you're just training, you don't want to hang out in the sloppy area too long. You don't want to take it too far. Okay, that's when you're starting to dip into competition. Okay, which people do get themselves in trouble with in the gym and CrossFit gyms. That's why CrossFit scares people because some people, their thing is they want to compete every day in the gym. And they sign a waiver. That's their thing. Coaches warn them. It's like, look, you keep doing pull-ups like that, sloppy, you're going to get a slap tear. And that person says, yeah, I know, but I just, I, I like to train this way. Then it's on them. Okay? They signed a waiver. They're an adult. They were told by another adult that that is very dangerous and it could, could hurt them. And... And even then, it's it just it's not it's not as scary as people think. Still haven't seen any catastrophic statistics when it comes to injuries. There's there's way more things to be worried about in life than a slap tear from pull-ups um, <clears throat> that are more likely to happen, like a car accident. So. Uh, that's when I see coaches getting in arguments about proper form, proper training modalities. It's it's usually because they're, they're lacking the vocabulary. They don't understand the difference between practice, training, and competing. For example, they'll look at the CrossFit games and they'll, they'll pick out a, a sloppy rep and say, see, CrossFit, CrossFitters are so sloppy. Um. Uh, what they don't know is if, if they hung out with that games athlete day to day, their technique is so pristine, so efficient, that it's the reason that it allows them to have a higher work capacity than everybody else on the planet. They know how to do push-ups with better form than you. They know how to do pull-ups with better form than you. They know how to do clean and jerks and snatches with better form than you. Tia Toomey, the, 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 the champion right now, is an Olympic weightlifter. Okay? She knows better form than you. You don't get to the highest levels of, of championships of, of competing with bad form. Bad form wears you out. It's inefficient. Okay? So, there are different types of training speeds. You have strict, you have plyometrics, you have sprints, you have static. They all have their different purposes. And then you have different uh, modes, is what you can call them. You're either practicing, which is super slow. It's all accuracy. You're using proper form. Okay, Training, which is you're pushing your limits. You're pushing your endurance. You're pushing your, your strength. You're... Your, you're sacrificing form a little bit towards the end of each set, toward the end of each time domain to push up the, the volume you can do with good form. All right. And then you have competing. And, and when you're competing, all bets are off. It's like, okay, you within the rules of the game, I'm going to score as many points as I can. And I'm going to push those rules to the limit. Okay, you can watch that in any sport. So don't don't get caught up uh, watching games athletes at the games and say, "Oh, their form's so shitty." He's like, "Yeah, they're competing." Uh, have you ever watched a boxing match? Round twelve was their form perfect? Was it proper? No, they're getting pretty sloppy at the end of that boxing match. UFC match last round getting pretty sloppy. Okay. So that's uh just wanted to clear that up. There's 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 a vocabulary that you need to know in order to enter this argument about what's proper or not for that scenario when you see somebody training or competing or practicing. Okay, what are their goals? What are they trying to 
be good at. And if they're trying to be good at something you don't care about, it doesn't mean they're wrong. All right, that's just their goal in life. All right, so if you guys have any questions, shoot me a, a, a direct message. You can find me at trainbydane.com. Hopefully I cleared up some, some information there.